the issue was uh, recently put by Jeffrey Sachs uh, when he proposed to finance a big push of investment you know, in, uh, and, uh, uh, in poor countries using foreign resources. Uh, he assumed that uh, uh, these poor countries were not able to generate enough domestic savings. And this book shows that it is not true, uh, at least for some of them, for, I would say several or many of them. No, because uh, uh, when we think of savings, we must always uh, remember that it is not only household savings. It is, uh, it is true that uh, for most of the population of these countries, uh, it would be very difficult to uh, do anything else than eat and, uh, and, uh, and cover the basic needs with uh, their, their revenues. But uh, besides households, you have uh, government savings and you have uh, firms' savings. No? And uh, it, it is not uh, reasonable to think that uh, a country that is exporting maybe uh, 50, 60, 70 percent of oil, no? of, of its GDP in oil, has not savings capacity, that this firm cannot save anything. You cannot think of a country like Equatorial Guinea, who exports uh, more or less one barrel per capita per day. No? Because uh, it's about uh, 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 600,000 barrels and more or less the same number of population, has not capacity to save, would need foreign resources to to develop, to, to, to have a, a investment, to have a social policy. Uh, then th th that, is, that is, of course, one point. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the other is uh, the, the, the curse that could be uh, associated to, paradoxically, no, to, to this uh, wealth. Uh, and when I said that, uh, I think uh, the, the book uh, takes the right angle, the right approach to discuss this point is because it does not rely on an econometric uh, exercise to, uh, to say whether uh, the, the, this, uh, uh, this explains that. No? Uh, that, that uh, there is a ri uh, uh, richness and, and, and a mineral uh, uh, um, range that uh, would uh, spoil growth uh, and development. Uh, and then you must go case by case. You must analyze. Uh, you must analyze countries uh, because uh, you have too many things that interact together. You have a, a, a political, social, cultural, historical, economic factors, and then you must uh, really understand what happened. And, uh, uh, and you must then uh, know the the history, know the country, know the case. And then, the, then I. I congratulate also the, the, the authors and, the, 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 and Cathy and the organizer of this book for this approach. Uh, commodity scarce. Uh, I think that uh, it is an example uh, of what uh, Karl Marx named commodities fetishism. That is to attribute to a thing, a commodity, what in fact is a social relationship or in this case also institutions. Uh, and uh, uh, because the, the problem, I don't think, is related to what a country exported when, when they integrated the international economy. Most developing countries, if not all, uh, uh, well, uh, defined their, their eco economic history uh, 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 depending on uh, uh, this uh, integration into the international economy as exporters. Uh, and I don't think, of course, that it is irrelevant what you export you know, uh, for your development thing, but I think it is not the most important thing. I, I will try to, to, to illustrate the point, uh, um, for instance, Yes, Chile and Bolivia, which integrated the international economy and are still basically mining exporters, uh, had much of their development shaped by that fact. Uh, but, uh, uh, and it was not exactly the same for another country like Argentina, which integrated the international economy 
uh, as exporter of uh, cereal and meat. And uh, some developing economists like Celso Furtado showed that, yes, that uh, had many uh, uh, consequences, uh, and that in the case of Argentina or uh, Uruguay or the south of Brazil, the fact that uh, they integrated uh, the, this international economy as exporters uh, of agricultural products uh, produced in an extensive way uh, uh, generated some spontaneous linkages with the rest of the, of the economy, already with railroads, um, silos, sports, uh, and maybe more important, migrants that uh, uh, generated a strong domestic market. And it is also true, at, at, as it was said here, that uh, on, on the other hand, mining exploitations have a tendency to be an enclave, uh, which must lower impact on the infrastructure development that could be used for the rest of the, of the economy uh, and lower employment creation. Uh, but then the big difference between Chile and Bolivia is the role of the state. It was historically that uh, in the case of Chile, they had uh, a government and a state that uh, could function efficiently enough for capturing a large part of the rent and using it for development, and that was not the case of Bolivia. Then, from a development point of view, I would say that the big difference is not between Chile and Argentina, it's between Chile and Bolivia. No? And, uh, uh, well, only, only quite recently Bolivia has a uh, uh, be able to uh, benefit more from their own resources, but uh, uh, that's, that has been a very long and, and, and uh, 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 persistent uh, 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 factor. Uh, then the, the basic question uh, is about linkages, you know, that uh, uh, how you link the, div the, the, the more uh, dynamic sector to the rest of the economy in order to avoid the anchor of economy. You can do many things, uh, or at least some things, uh, in terms of uh, generating more value added, of uh, uh, creating uh, some domestic supply for inputs of the mining sector. It is possible, but it is limited. And uh, I fully agree uh, with, uh, with Samuel and Katia when they, they, they spoke about the fiscal linkage. That is the most important thing, I think. And then we have a twofold challenge. On one side, uh, governments must be able to capture a significant part of the rent, uh, and uh, they must use them wisely. That is the, the other aspect. You know, a, a Venezuelan journalist uh, branded in the 30s, 1930s the expression to seed oil. And uh, uh, this is a very particular seed in the sense that uh, it is expected to produce a different uh, entity than uh, the one it comes from. You, know? you see it all and you get something else. <coughs> to some extent, you must also <laughs> uh, 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 feed the, the chicken uh, of the golden uh, eggs, but uh, on a strategic perspective, you must diversify. Uh, and this doesn't happen spontaneously. You need to have a, a, a development policy uh, on that. Uh, well, UNCTAD has recently worked uh, uh, in the last uh, few years on, on this topic. Maybe we insisted more in the beginning on the first part, you know, how the rent is distributed and uh, how is it possible for governments to get a larger part of that rent. Um, maybe because we, we were uh, 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 filling a, a, a gap, I would say, because already the World Bank and other institutions were saying how to use well the money from uh, windfall revenues you know, with higher prices. But it did not discuss the first part. What, but what are we, how much money are we talking about? You know, the, the, the chat case was, uh, was uh, very striking because uh, we had uh, in, the, in the project of uh, already financing the pipeline to get the uh, oil out from, from Chad to Cameroon and to the rest of the world. A lot of very detailed uh, uh, rules of how to use that money. But at that time, uh, Chad only got about 7% of total exports. Then uh, it was like a, a fantastic uh, uh, network uh, of uh, 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 irrigation system you know, with a lot of automatisms and very well thought without water. Uh, uh, then we, we tried to fill uh, that, uh, that gap by, uh, by discussing, but 
uh, how this can be really uh, taken by by the at least a fair part of that by uh, by the government. So I must say also that it was a very difficult uh, calculation. Uh, I have here uh, Pilar Fajarnes who uh, worked a lot uh, on that and uh, uh, noticed uh, how difficult it is. Uh, we, we, it is uh, sometimes a kind of uh, detective uh, you know, uh, 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 research because uh, there, are not, there are not transparency. <coughs> you, you cannot ex know how much uh, uh, these firms pay. Uh, what the costs are, etc. So it, it, it was a very difficult task, but a, a very important one, which uh, gives you the elements for the discussion. What are we speaking about? You know? And uh, also we could see that uh, we, we had uh, very big differences in oil and mining exporting countries about some countries that paid, uh, uh, firms paid a lot, one sometimes because they were public firms, and the other cases in which they pay very few, and uh, with no economic reason. Uh, and then uh, our, our suggestion was uh, to say, well, uh, change the rules. You know? uh, avoid the race to the bottom you know, that many developing countries have followed in terms of saying, come and invest here because you are not going to pay much taxes and you are going to be able to uh, not to respect the environment. For instance, mm -hmm. I, I actually saw a prospect saying that uh, from a secretary of mining of one country uh, about environment. Uh, the, 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 don't do that. On the contrary, take profit of the changes and do like other countries do. Because uh, this uh, could be a, a matter of a dilemma, kind of say, well, what uh, is more important, sanctity of contracts or uh, getting a, a, a reasonable share of these rents that are much more important after the uh, price rose uh, beginning in 2003. Uh, well, in the, the answer to that dilemma, I would say, is uh, already uh, in the facts, because uh, 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 everybody uh, is changing this rule, including develop developed countries. No? And uh, uh, very recently, uh, the United Kingdom rose for the second time, the, the, the taxes on the uh, uh, North uh, Sea uh, oil, because, uh, as they say, well, there's no reason that a rent that is generated with no responsibility, it is not because of technical innovation that uh, they, they are uh, gaining more money, uh, and that was not uh, incorporated into the project of investing or not, would go entirely to the firm. So then there is a strong rationale on that. But then you have the other point. Then, then what to do with that, with that money? And then uh, maybe that is uh, one part of the curse story uh, uh, comes. No? Uh, and uh, um, I would say that I, uh, well, uh, you, are, you already understood that I don't believe in curses of this, uh, this kind. No, uh, and particularly from mining, I don't know. Of course, you you you, you may have an oligarchy uh, owners of the mining, but uh, you also have a land also oligarchy, and uh, they are not uh, much uh, more uh, development friendly than the, the other one, or democratic, or <clears throat> or respectful from from environment. On the contrary, sometimes uh, with agriculture you can pollute uh, a larger uh, area. Uh, but uh, then, yes, what, uh, what, how to avoid the bad use of this? You know? And uh, the question is really complicated because, of course, uh, I, I agree with the, the main ideas of we must take care of this, this and that. We must take care of economic stability, counter-cyclical policy, um, future generations, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the needs you have now. No, because uh, if you don't have this generation, you don't have the next one. So no, or, or you don't have in in, in a good shape the, the next one. So the uh, I, there is a dilemma. I admit there is a dilemma, and I don't have an easy answer to that. Because ideally, you should say you must do everything. You must have a sovereign fund. 
thinking of a future generation, a stabiliz stabilization macroeconomic fund in order to smooth expenditure in the economy and avoid procyclical policies, and you must uh, cover the urgent needs you have in terms of infrastructure, social uh, uh, security and uh, social needs and education and and so many things. Then, unless you are very few countries like Qatar, maybe, or Saudi Arabia, that uh, you have enough money for everything, uh, you must choose. And uh, this is a difficult choice. And uh, I would say uh, uh, that uh, uh, our bias would be to uh, think of the development needs now, uh, in the sense that uh, um, It is, uh, no, if you must uh, uh, think of what is better for long-term development and even for future generations between accumulating foreign assets uh, or developing social expenditure, what is the best of the two things? Mm. Yeah? Uh, and, uh, uh, and it is not a counter-cyclical expenditure. Because if you are covering more people with, uh, that uh, cannot uh, uh, have a pension and you pay for every elderly people some minimum pension, well, you are not going to withdraw that uh, if the prices go down. Or if you uh, uh, incorporate more uh, young uh, people to education, well, you are not going to cut that. It is not a counter-cyclical <coughs> uh, 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 expenditure. Uh, and at the same time, I'm not saying to be pro-cyclical. Of course, it would be very good if we can have some room for maneuver in terms of uh, short-term macroeconomic uh, uh, <coughs> management. And uh, I think that many of the course things uh, uh, like uh, uh, um, Dutch disease can be handled. And we have enough instruments in macroeconomic toolbox for handling that. No? But we still will have this kind of uh, uh, um, the dilemma or, or trade-off you know, between some kind of expenditures that are not counter-cyclical and that you can do now because the prices are bad. There is also some aspect of analysis you know, to say, well, are we uh, in a top of a cycle of the price that go return to the 1998 uh, level or uh, 2002 level uh, soon, no, uh, or not. Uh, our idea is that uh, uh, the prices may not continue uh, increasing uh, uh, forever or, or for a, a reasonably long period of time, but will not re return to the other level either. So that at least some part of the new rents, of the, the, the new revenues you are getting now, you can use them in long-term uh, needs. Uh, and uh, uh, the important point then would be to use them in, thumbs, in something that is an investment, in something that will generate a revenue that otherwise would not exist. And in that sense, then you are uh, 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 obtaining uh, uh, sustain sustainability. No? You, are, uh, uh, you are not uh, just uh, eating the bread today for uh, uh, starve tomorrow. Um, then, well, I, I think then that uh, uh, the, 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 this is uh, the this is the philosophy we are we are we are suggesting. No. Uh, in terms of uh, taking, making sure that these rents are supplementary to other to other income, that they are not <coughs> substituting uh, uh, government income through, through taxes or uh, export incomes. You no, know? uh, for that then you must uh, avoid the, the Dutch disease. You must have an industrial policy. You must uh, have a fiscal policy that uh, would not rely on this rent, take this rent as a plus, not as a substitute. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, I will end sending that the mining rents must not discourage the generation of non-mining resources. It must encourage it. And uh, maybe in a nutshell, it is what I wanted to say today.